When it comes to business and financial success, the greatest tool we have at our disposal is our mind. In business, our mind is the determining factor between success and failure. And the beauty is our minds are so malleable that we can develop the mindset and characteristics to best achieve that success. It is within every one of our ability to completely, through neuroplasticity, change our brain and change our mind. While there are many paths to success, something I've noticed is that all successful people, no matter what field they're in, have a natural tendency to be present and mindful. Maybe not in every aspect of their lives, but they have an ability to sense risk, sense reward, sense where trends and markets are going. But above that intuition, there is a knowingness that whether we are right or wrong, we have the ability to correct any mistake, to overcome any challenge that may come up. And so they naturally have some degree of control and mastery over their mind. Now, if we didn't grow up surrounded by entrepreneurs, that mindset might not be second nature. The beauty is the same spiritual techniques that I talk about go to the root of our mind, go to the heart of bringing about a greater awareness, an expanded consciousness, and a higher wisdom that translates into our lives as fearless confidence, as greater creativity, and a greater understanding of how to maneuver those corporate chess pieces on our chessboard to create that growth we're looking for. And we do this two ways. The first is we have to understand the mechanisms of our mind and why we are struggling in the first place, how we can create that Michael Jordan mindset. He was a meditator and he had that natural gift of watching his thoughts and not tolerating any complaining or negativity. So that when he put in 20-hour days into basketball, his mind was loving it because he realized that this is the only way to show up early, stay late, and not get burnt out, not resist it, not hating it, which only builds up stress until we eventually explode. And that explosion can look like burnout, can look like addiction, it can even just be laziness, where we are begrudgingly going to work and can't wait to get out. When that happens, we're not thinking creatively, we're not putting 100% into our success. And we are not going to be the most proactive, the most creatively problem solving, because our heart won't be in it. And so the first thing we have to realize is that our brains are quantum computers. They can, like a quantum computer, run countless calculations simultaneously, whereas a normal digital computer can only run one calculation at a time. And so when we are thinking that one thought at a time, one word at a time, stream of thought, our brain is in digital mode and we can only run simulations and calculations very slowly. We can think of a few scenarios, we can think of a few possible outcomes, and we can pick the one we think will work the best. 
But when we can get out of our head, when we can definitely absorb that information, but then we can get it out of our head and just sit with it and just sit in that space where we are sensing all that information we just took in and we are able to see a pathway emerge that is free from the negatives of all the other possible scenarios. This is what is possible when we become fully present, when we take in not just the data and the statistics and the research reports, but we can read between the lines and we can connect the dots between the data and we can see what is truly relevant and what is not so important. Because when we get out of our head, when we stop thinking, only then are we actually going to have any clarity about a situation in front of us. So I call this activating our quantum computer. These quantum computers that are coming are going to change everything for our species. It is going to be able to guess every possible shape of every possible virus and bacteria and it because it can guess every single one all at once it will be able to do thousands of years worth of computing and calculation in a matter of minutes and days our brains literally are quantum computers we take in so much information and process it all at once. And so that is why we have the most efficient computers in the entire universe between our ears. But if we try to limit that infinite intelligence of the design of the human body, and we try to grasp it in a few words, that infinite complexity and knowledge, we will never understand and have true wisdom of the universe. But when the thinking stops, we can see clearly, free from emotion, free from that ego, where we might make irrational decisions. Only when we overthink do we overcomplicate and ultimately lead to inaction and hurting our success. This clearing of the mind is not something new that I just invented. <laughs> it's actually something that has been a natural habit of inventors, creators, thinkers, philosophers, artists for thousands of years. And we see it even in the folklore of Sir Isaac Newton sitting under a tree, resting, when the theory of gravity hits him. We see Albert Einstein talking about how the ideas would come to him on his bike rides or while playing violin, both activities that require us to be fully present or else we'll get in an accident or mess up our notes. It has been studied and observed that the best way to bring about creativity and better business ideas is to dive in and completely become absorbed into the information, the research, the science, the data, whatever it is that is in our domain of knowledge, that is in the scope of this project, whether it's researching competitors or researching a product, we fully wrap our heads around whatever it is we're focusing on, and then we clear the mind. We let it marinate. We let it seep into our subconscious. 
And as we are fully present, our mind fully clear, and with so much space for new ideas to enter, that is when we find that inspiration, that aha moment. And we can create more of that simply by creating the space. This is why so many CEOs, billionaires, and entrepreneurs swear by meditation and spirituality as their greatest resource for business success. Because not only does it change our mind, not only does it disperse fear and panic and bad decisions, but that discipline, that patience, and that ability to focus on one thing for an extended period of time is essential to success. And it's why even Einstein again famously said, I am not smarter than anyone else. I just stay with problems longer. I am also paraphrasing that, so no mean comments. It might be slightly different. The act of sitting in meditation is the act of training ourselves in business, believe it or not. Because in meditation, what are we doing? We are sitting, oftentimes with uncomfortable thoughts, often with urges telling us to stop, complaining about it, screaming how bored our ego is, telling us we're not doing it right, telling us we're wasting our time, and we just sit with it. We just bring our attention back to our focal point, whether it's our breath or a mantra. And in doing so, we are preparing ourselves for the business world. We are preparing ourselves for constant rejection. People telling us we're no good. People telling us no one's going to want to buy our product or telling us we should get out of the business or, you know, anything else that so many successful people have been told and they never gave up. Business will be difficult. It'll be hard. There'll be scary times. There will be worry, stress, wanting to quit. And we will have trained for that. We will understand those thoughts, where they come from. And we will be experts in refocusing, rededicating, and recommitting ourselves to our successful future. The focus that we develop in meditation or from simply being mindful in every task that we do, what we are doing is not just developing focus for the tasks in our day-to-day -day job or profession. We are actually building up focus in our lives so we don't get distracted and we stick to our goals. It is essential to develop that kind of focus. So we're not just learning focus in meditation, but by doing meditation every single day, Unlike reading a motivation book, what we are doing is creating lasting change, permanent transformation in our brain. We are learning to focus on a skill, a task, a goal, in this case the meditation, and we make it a daily practice that builds on itself each and every day. And this is how businesses grow. This is how we learn to stay focused on what we are trying to achieve so we don't get distracted by TV or alcohol or socializing because part of mindfulness is 
living in alignment with our body, mind, heart, intentions, words, and actions. The word yoga means union, and it means to live in alignment. So there is no inner conflict. There is no inner suffering. There is no resistance to reality or the present moment. And yoga is not just stretching exercise. It is a way of life. It is to always be mindful, to always peacefully watch our thoughts so that we don't get carried away by them, so we don't believe them when they are out of alignment with our highest intention, our highest wisdom, and our greatest good. For so many people who are struggling to get out of poverty, fear, worry, stress, and a lack mentality are our greatest obstacles. And if we are not mindful of those mindsets, where they came from, why we believe them, so that we can ignore them and know the deeper truth, which is to believe in ourselves, that we are equally worthy as anyone else, and that self-doubt, fear of failure, have no room in our mind, in our hearts, and if Michael Jordan wouldn't put up with it, neither should we. In just 20 minutes a day, we can invest in our success, not just financially, but in life, spiritually, in our relationships. When we are lost in our head, we don't see options. We see traps. We see cages. We see limits. But when we are truly present, we see opportunities. We see personal growth opportunities. We see solutions and insights for problems we thought insurmountable. Really, when you think about it, business is a present moment mindset. It is constantly moving forward, never letting the past keep you down, never waiting for the future to arrive. It is about making that future happen right here and now. When we stay mindful and in the present moment, we don't lose ourselves. We don't lose our values. We don't give up our morals and our ethics. We stay true to ourselves. We don't trade our soul for short-term profits. We don't sell our customers or coworkers short to get ahead. And in doing so, we create long-term growth and value, real lasting value. In fact, it is truly only through mindfulness that we can be rich and spiritually rich at the same time. Only with mindfulness can we work towards achieving material success while not losing ourselves or expecting that that material wealth will bring us the lasting happiness we seek. And only through mindfulness can we enjoy the journey, can we enjoy the day-to-day -day grind, the grudging hard work day in and day out for decades and still be happy. 
because it's not about the destination. If we think that the day we retire is the day we'll be happy, A, we'll be wrong, and B, we will have missed out on a chance to have a happy life. With mindfulness, we have balance. We have a successful family and community as well as a business. Because we become mindful of the fact that we're all one, we are all connected. When my community does well, I do well. I have more support. And with mindfulness, we recognize that money is not good or evil. It is a storage of energy that can be used for tremendous good, like supporting ourselves, our loved ones, and our fellow man. So go out there, become a mindful millionaire, mindful billionaire, mindful trillionaire, <laughs> and do some good. Much love. <laughs>